A mother who's given birth to 44 children has been barred from having any further children by her husband. In the year after she was married off at the age of 12, Miriam Nabatanzi became a mother to twins. Following that, there were five more sets of twins, as well as four sets of triplets and five sets of quadruplets. Miriam Nabatanzi has given birth to 38 children, six of them unfortunately perished as a result of her abnormally big ovaries. Her husband abandoned her three years ago, leaving her to sustain her, their 38 children on her own. She's now 39 years old and lives alone in Uganda. Her family has been forced into poverty as a result of this. A village surrounded by coffee fields, 31 miles north of Kampala, is home to her and her children, who live in a four small cement block cottages with corrugated iron roofs in a village surrounded by coffee fields. Doctors have intervened to prevent Miriam from having any more children now that she's 40. She claimed that the doctor informed her that he had cut my uterus from the inside. After the birth of her first set of twins, she embarked on an epic string of pregnancies that would last for years. When she went to the doctor, it was discovered that she had abnormally large ovaries, which was concerning. He cautioned her that birth control drugs, for example, could cause health concerns. Despite this, the children continued to arrive and arrive. In Africa, the average family size is the largest it's ever been. As reported by the World Bank, Uganda has a fertility rate of 5.6 children per woman on average, making it one of the highest on the continent and more than twice as high as the global average of 2.4 children per woman. Her 38-child family, on the other hand, is perhaps the largest in the country. Physician Dr. Charles Kigundu of Maglago Hospital in Kampala, Uganda, has told the Daily Monitor that the most likely cause of Nabatanzi's extraordinary fertility is inherited. She has a genetic predisposition to hyperovulate, which means she releases numerous eggs in a single cycle, which considerably enhances the likelihood of having multiple births, according to him. It is usually genetic in nature. Her previous pregnancy, which occurred three years ago, was complicated. The twins were her sixth set of twins, and one of them died after childbirth, making her sixth child to pass away. Then her spouse, who had been absent for extended periods of time, abandoned her. His surname has become a curse in the family. Nabatanzi refers to him as he and uses an expletive to describe him. The woman, who spoke during an interview at her home with her hands clasped as tears welled in her eyes, said, I have grown up in tears and my man has put me through a lot of misery. Every waking moment has been spent taking care of my children and working to supplement my income. With no other option than to turn to every possible source of income, Nabatanzi tries everything from hairdressing and event decoration to collecting and selling scrap metal to manufacturing local gin and selling herbal medication. Food, medical care, clothing, and school fees eat up all the money available to them. She has proud photos of several of her children who have graduated from school hanging on a dingy wall in one of her home's rooms with gold tinsel around their necks. Her eldest kid, Ivan Kabuka, age 23, was forced to leave out of secondary school after the family's financial resources were depleted. Mom is overburdened and the job is crushing her. We assist her where we can, such as with cooking and laundry, but she still bears the entire load of the family, he explained further. I feel sorry for her. Nabatanzi's ambition for a large family has its origins in a tragic event in his life. Nabatanzi's mother abandoned the family three days after she was born, leaving her father, the newborn child, and her five siblings all on their own. The tattered children played on the dirt floor while the rest of the family went about their daily activities, and Nabatanzi somberly reflected on their mother's departure. Following her father's remarriage, her stepmother poisoned the five elder children by mixing crushed glass into their food and feeding them. They were all killed. Nabatanzi claimed she was able to get away because she was visiting a relative. I was seven years old at the time and I was too young to comprehend what dying genuinely meant. I was informed of what had occurred by family members, she explained. She grew up wanting to have six children in order to reconstruct her family after it was damaged. Providing a home for 38 children is a constant source of difficulty. One small room with grime-caked walls is home to 12 children who sleep on metal bunk beds with flimsy mattresses on the floor. In the other rooms, the lucky children sleep on shared mattresses, 
while the rest of the youngsters sleep on the dirt floor beneath their bunks. Social media reacts in a variety of ways. Ify Mato made the following observation. She is a true heroine in every sense of the word. She should be inducted into the Guinness Book of World Records. In addition, the Ugandan president should assume responsibility for the entire family's well-being. It has to be recorded in history because only God has the ability to do so. When discussing the history of Uganda, she will almost certainly be brought up as a point of discussion. This is quite uncommon in the world. Congratulations! Hopefully, God will continue to provide for you and your family. Natasha Ibrahim shared her thoughts on the subject. I pray that Allah blesses her and her children. With my single pregnancy, I'm barely able to keep my head over water. I adore the fact that she always comes home to a party waiting for her. This is such a blessing. Mary Ann Delaney had this to say. She's really stunning. Her children are in good health. Nonetheless, they must be able to receive financial assistance. Early marriage should be legalized, but the laws must be changed. God's blessings on them and their family. Jayanti Sitha expressed her thoughts as follows. I don't see any magnificence in them. Can they provide a good life for their children? If we don't have the right to ruin someone's childhood or future, then it isn't only over when they're born. I feel really sorry for those kids. A woman who's given birth to 17 children said she would like to have more. According to a recent post from Viral Story, a mother who's given birth to 17 children has indicated that she wishes to have more children. In an interview with BBC News Pigeon, the 47-year-old woman stated that she's always had relatively easy pregnancies and that just one of her children was born through a surgery. Jumai has only been to the hospital twice to deliver her children out of the total number of deliveries she's experienced. The remaining times were delivered to the customer's residence. The mother revealed that seven of the children had perished, leaving five girls and five boys. People are constantly in complete surprise when she tells them how many children she has, according to the mother, who was married at the age of 14. What exactly is ovulation? Ovulation is the release of a mature female egg cell from the ovary, which occurs once during each menstrual cycle and is usually followed by a period of infertility. The egg cycle can survive for up to 24 hours after it's liberated from the egg. If the egg cell does not become fertilized, the egg cell dies and the menstrual cycle moves on to the next phase. When will I be able to conceive? Ovulation occurs after the end of the first phase of the menstrual cycle, which normally occurs around two weeks after your period, but this can vary greatly from woman to woman. Ovulation is accompanied by the release of an egg. With such a wide range of outcomes, this knowledge cannot be relied upon to prevent pregnancy by itself. Understanding your menstrual cycle, on the other hand, is an excellent first step in recognizing ovulation. What is the definition of hyperovulation? A condition known as hyperovulation, also known as multiple ovulation, occurs in some cycles where both ovaries release an egg cell at the same time. The occurrence of hyperovulation occurs within 24 hours of the first egg cell being released from the ovaries, unless otherwise specified. After this period, progesterone levels begin to rise, preventing ovulation from occurring once more. Genetics, certain medical problems, and fertility treatment are all thought to play a role in the development of hyperovulation. In addition, if you've recently stopped using hormonal birth control, you may be experiencing repeated ovulation. It's possible that you will not ovulate at all during certain cycles. This is referred to as anovulation. Tracking your ovulation and fertility Being able to detect ovulation and recognize it when it occurs during the menstrual cycle is essential for fertility tracking and management. Age-old methods have made use of it. Current methods and new technology can also make use of it to their advantage. With this information, it's feasible to either prevent or plan a pregnancy, since the fertile window reveals the most favorable time to conceive or to use birth control to avoid becoming pregnant in the first place. Fertility tracking entails much more than simply determining when a woman is in a reproductive window. Other parameters, like the length of the menstrual cycle and the survival of the sperm, must be taken into consideration in order to achieve success. There is a lack of understanding regarding the menstrual period. If you are interested in learning more about your body and the menstrual cycle, you may visit the Cycle Matters Hub, which contains a wealth of information on female health. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We will be right back to you as fast as we can.